Guess what, y'all? We're doing an experimental videotape interview with myself and brother Mark Bixler. What you say, Mark? You're already in the scene. Yeah, I'm already there, huh? So, <laughs> anyway. And, um, well, I hope my microphone's working. And I wanted to talk to you. This is going to go on the Men of Destiny page. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's do Men of Destiny. And <laughs> we, got the, we got the washing machine in the background. <laughs> um, but, you know, Men of Destiny, have you ever caught the full vision of that? You know, the full vision of the title Men of Destiny? I think each of us probably have our own idea, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I, I see Men of Destiny as something that um, praying for what God has planned. God has a plan. And I trust that plan. And sometimes we don't fully understand it. Sometimes we may never understand it, but we that plan is our destiny, I guess, would be mm -hmm. the best way maybe to describe that. God's perfect will for our life, heaven is our destiny. Yes. So God's perfect will and plan for our life is our destination. We'll, we'll achieve that yes. when we arrive in eternity, but when we become a uh, a follower of Jesus Christ the old man becomes history the, and the more and more that the old life is historical and not present reality the more we become men of our destiny you know yeah. it's it's about it's about transformation and sometimes i mean i i know him you know i've and i've been him i've been the guy who kept doing the same thing over and over again, who kept thinking the same way, who kept making the same steps, you know? And I don't necessarily mean I was going out and doing what I used to do, but my, my mind wasn't changed. And one of the things, I mean, we've talked about this before. One of the things that, I mean, I, I believe that is in the culture of American Christianity and, uh, churchism you know just the it's entrenched in mm -hmm. churchism is you've heard me say man shaming man blaming everything is the man's fault if a man is slightly masculine guess what that's toxic you know i'm not even gonna tell that story a story started to come <laughs> to my mind i'm not even gonna tell it but oh by the way before we get too deep into this hey shout out to reverend watson Hey, man, you ain't here with us. <laughs> we hanging. I don't know what happened to Reverend Watson. I meant to shout that out earlier. But, um, yeah, this is something we could do, Rev. And uh, this is new technology I got here. I don't have my, my cordless microphones ended up not working. But one of the things, imagine we... If we, if we imagine Christ in all of his glory, in all of his fullness, in his love, in his grace, in his mercy, he is so, he is so incredible. He's, he's, a, he's so magnificent. He's so glorious. And, and we imagine him in his earthly form and it says, what does it say? He had no glory or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Isaiah 53. But we've, we've kind of taken the reality out of living, you know what I'm saying? And we've, we've become more fantasy-oriented than reality-based. And I do believe, like, in some ways, Christian movies, and, you know, they, they depict um, situations that normally, if you do A, B, and C then your spouse or your significant other or your children are going to do D, E, and F, 
And then God's going to do the big G thing. God's yeah. going to be God. And there's nothing in the Bible that says, uh, and this goes to woman shaming too, but now it seems like the, there's such a diametrically opposite flip. You know, the every, now every everything is every man's fault. You know, and I, I, I've met so many brothers who walk around defeated and defeated and and historically encased yeah. remember this wide world of sports oh yeah what they used to say the thrill of what the thrill of victory and what and the agony of defeat agony of yeah, defeat and it is and, agony and there's men that walk around defeated. Um, defeated because they define themselves by what what even the world or Christianity mm -hmm. calls a win or a success. And even if you uh, uh, follow the perfect formula, you know, and there is no perfect formula. No, this, is a, this is a, love is about grace, yeah. you know. But Christianity has become very graceless. And if you don't perform according to I, what I consider Hollywood Christianity's you know, if you're not the perfect man yeah. in the perfect car and the perfect job and with the perfect answer, with something that, that, that would almost be expected on a movie, mm -hmm. then you ain't the perfect husband. Yeah. Well, you ain't, the goal is not supposed to be to be a perfect right. husband. I, I, uh, our, the pastor at where I go to church in Canton, uh, Pastor, I, I'm going to give him a shout out, Pastor Bruce Rushing. Uh, he's leading Who? this. Bruce Rushing. I know. He, uh, he's retiring at uh, the end of June and uh, but he mentioned in his sermon John Gray's book men are from Mars women are from Venus mm -hmm. and that's so true we are so wired differently mm -hmm. and I think sometimes we forget that mm -hmm. as not just men but the women in the relationships mm -hmm. do too we're wired differently and then he wrote that book in 90s, I think. In early to mid 90s, yeah. so he—that's a 25-year-old yeah. book, and it's even, still true. And, and and it no, well, it's changed a lot, even in 25 years. Well, yeah, because the the expectation level on men is higher, but but here here we go as far as expectations. The the expectation level, societally and culturally, on women, is lower. I mean, I, I, the bar is lowered. They're, 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 they don't, there's no expectation of them to bring anything to the table, you know. And you, all I hear, I hear a lot of man-shaming messages, and I'm talking about even from the church. You know, so it would be, the, it's, it's the abusive type of thing of, like if a woman came to the pastor and, the, you know, she's in emotional, mental, and possibly... I'm just going to leave the physical, just emotionally and mentally. She's, she's degraded. She's devalued. She's invalidated. She tries to speak to her husband, and she goes through invalidation. This, this is basically narcissistic abuse. And the husband or the pastor says, you know, wives are supposed to submit to their. Just go home and submit to your husband. That's wrong. That's shaming her. Right. But it seems like there's been a diametrically opposite uh, trajectory now to shame men. You know, to put all of this, all of the guilt on one right. party or the other. My my take on that, the, the scripture of the submission is, you know, the, the men are called to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And how did, how did Christ love the church? He submitted to the church. Mm -hmm. So my take on that scripture is both. Are to love each other and to do what it takes to make that relationship work. Well, it, it says, and it says um, in Ephesians five before it goes into any specifics for anyone, it says husbands and wives submit yourselves to one to another. one another. Yes, uh, a very very good point. And it, and so there's a mutuality yep. in submission. So I look at it like this: it's. Um, uh, it, it's not an overbearing type of submission. Like, I'm the slave no. and you're the master. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> and and it, it the responsibility to be, a, a, what I've told you before, the prophet 
to your family, the priest to your family, mm -hmm. and the prince to your family. I, I use prince in place of king, but I've heard people say king. But there's only one king, and his name is Jesus. So, Amen. And prophet, priest, and king is, is a high responsibility position. But it's, it's that same position as, uh, as Christ was to, the, to, the, to his congregation, to, mm -hmm. the, to the church, to his disciples. Yes. And you can love your wife as Christ loved the church, and Christ loves the church enough that, that if the church comes to him, they come to him. You know, come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But if the church is not listening to him, not abiding with him, and even departing from him, he didn't get them in a stranglehold in a full Nelson yeah. and force them to listen to him. And I mean, we've got this this weakening of men, you know, where basically I, I see a lot of guys running around almost like they're chasing the apron strings of their mama. What can I do to make you happy today? What can I do to please and, you? What can yeah. I do? Did I do something wrong? You know, and I'm like, uh, I didn't even do that. In fact, I didn't even do that with my mama. though. You know, I mean, she wasn't overbearing and domineering but it's just this that's not to me what a man is supposed to be and not what we're supposed to be but that's where man guilt has taken men to that position where and and this is something uh, that's saying happy wife happy life to me that's demonic that's that's satanic what if what makes your wife happy makes God's heart break? That that and I'm I mean this is rampant in the church. Church right. folks say this. Well, right. it's your job I, to make absolutely. your wife happy. I've heard a lot of ministers say that. Yeah, I've I've you know it's your job to make your wife happy. No, it's not. You don't know who? Where's that? Show me that in scripture. Love your wives as Christ so loved the church. You know, there's some stuff in there that you know I really wish I didn't have to hear that. Well, and that's the culture we're in today. Well, no, don't say anything. Don't say repentance. And don't say that this is a sin. Well, you know, we're under grace, you know. Um, what's wrong with abortion? You know, what's wrong with homosexuality? Yep. What's wrong with uh, gay marriage, you let, know? Let me say this. Yes, we are, we're not under law anymore. We're under the period of grace. But... When it comes to sin, if it was a sin in the Old Testament, it's still a sin in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah. But the fact of the matter is, what's in the Word of God? I mean, I'm saved by grace and not by works, so that no man can boast, according also to Ephesians, uh, in the book of Ephesians. But I'm not saved to sin. I'm saved from, from sin. sin. Amen. And, and you know how do, how is it that you get that? Okay, <laughs> you know because you know it's just just deceit, lying. Okay, lying is now an acceptable. It, it, that's now an acceptable sin. No, no, you don't hear from the pulpit a silence on preaching against honesty, mm -hmm. honesty or the virtue of honesty. But now, and I'm not. I'm not even trying to go into the to the gay marriage. More more just the fact that there's nobody's saying anything that there's there's not fifty and sixty genders. That God made them male and, and female. Two. Yes. Fe Amen. Male and female he made them, he yeah. him they made. And there's whatever. preachers who have gone to jail or been arrested for hate crimes because of saying statements like that. Yeah. Well, they might have, but now that's how the church treats you if you yeah. make statements like that. That's how somebody who claims to be a follower of Christ treats you if you make statements like that. Here's uh I'm gonna read I guess I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna commit you to read this. Oh. Ha ha <laughs> we're gonna have a little scripture here today. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 7. The Spirit clearly says that in, la in later time some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits 
and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods. Let me get a sip of water here. You're not on radio now. You're yeah, on I camera. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and by prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters... Well, wait a minute. If you what? If you point these things out... Oh, we're supposed to point things yeah, out? Absolutely. Okay, shoot. Okay. <coughs> I thought we were just supposed to let everybody do what they want. Okay, go ahead. To the brothers and sisters, <coughs> you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. Amen. And that, I, I you know, uh, godless myths and old wives tales. So what is this happy wife, happy life? Is that absolutely. in the Bible? No. No, we're, we are, we are to, we are to live to delight the Lord. And the Lord delights when we, yeah. when we love and honor our spouse and our families yeah. and our children. Also... He delights when we delight in him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know? And just for me personally and maybe for you also, maybe you can relate to the fact that, I mean, I know in the past I've prayed for things that didn't go my way. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've, we've allowed this narcissist type of Narcissetical, I call it narcissus. In other words, if I don't get my way, God's not good and God yeah. doesn't love me, you know. And the fact of the matter is, thank God, in certain yeah. circumstances, I got to know. Yeah. I, di I didn't get my way. The, the, the first sentence in this, and I, I truly believe this time is starting mm -hmm. currently. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Doctrines. I like doctrines of demons. Because yeah. this right here, this piece of paper, mm -hmm. and if, if that's a doctrine. I mean, yeah. this is a document. And it's got, it's got, this has got scripture on it. But, but I believe God is starting the separation of the goats mm -hmm. and the lambs. Oh, yeah. The sheep and the goats. Yep. The wheat and the chafe, yep. you know. Um... We're seeing it in the church right now. Yeah. And it doesn't mean uh, between the, uh, those who... There's a place in the, in the book of Malachi where it talks about the faithful remnant who, who love, who revere the Lord since they got together and they spoke with one another. And it says when they spoke with one another, the Lord saw it and he wrote a scroll of remembrance of them in heaven. That they feared the Lord. And that's another thing is like, if if we are his children, indwelt by his spirit, we can disagree agreeably. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yep. And still love one another yeah. and stay in Amen. fellowship and in, in fellowship and in communion. But if there is something that's, I, I think this, if, if it's involved with a doctrine taught by demons and we will not be able to have fellowship with one another. Even mm. if I was willing, they will be unwilling. Yeah. Because this is this is a scripture I have here from Ecclesiastes. And this is this is the this is the country we live in. This is the city we live in. Sometimes this is the homes we live in. And it's definitely the nation we live in. And it's turning into the globe we live in. And it's uh Ecclesiastes I got seven through fifteen printed out this is probably about verse 17 it says do not be overly righteous in other words when it says don't be overly righteous 
don't make it a point to be right all the time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, this isn't like be wrong or do wrong. It is let some stuff go, you know. Uh, maybe the fact that you're right doesn't even matter in some things, you know. Um, don't make everything a divisive argument. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. And see, the reason why we have divides and extremism and radical left and radical right is I have, have to, to be, be right. right. Yeah. I, my, my party or, platform. My way or the highway. Right. My ideology, yeah. you know. Um, and the reason why families split up. I'm the man of the house. I was just sharing with Reverend Watson. You know, my dad, I love him to death. I respect him. Hardcore World War II veteran. Survived the Great Depression. Factory worker. Tough, strong guy. Okay. This is my house. I'm the man of the house. Mm -hmm. Because I said so. Mm -hmm. That didn't work too good. That caused some issues. But it says don't be overly righteous. Don't have to be right all the time. Don't be overly wise. And then it goes on to say, why destroy yourself? Because to live like that is self-destructive. It is self-destructive. And it says here, and do, don't be a fool. There's a lot of basic stuff here. Don't be foolish. And it says here, why die before your time? There's... Mm. The foolishness is 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 biblically uh, something that says can cause an end of your you know an end of your life early, and it says here it is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. So and these are extreme opposites, right? So if I grasp one and don't let go of the other, where do I have to be? I'm not over here and I'm not over there. Where am I? You're in between. I'm in the middle. I'm I'm not gonna be over here, and I'm not gonna be over there. I'm gonna be in the middle, and this ain't, doesn't mean you're <clears throat> making compromise to be a person, as it says right here, and not let go of the other. Whoever fears God will avoid all extremes and doctrines of demons. And, you know the last days mm -hmm. type of teachings and the last days type of followings. It's it's leading to. <clears throat> The people you're going to see weeded out, you're going to know who to be like, okay, is that extreme over here <clears throat> and extreme over there. And I think the people who are centered in Christ are going to be centered in their teaching and they're also going to avoid the, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm apolitical, anti-political. I vote and I know mm -hmm. we need a government. I'm not anti-government, but I don't, I don't root for anybody, you know. Because the left and the right mm -hmm. is still, they're all the same. Well, and scripture says that God puts in place who was elected. Yeah. Amen. Mm. So, I, I just want to say this. With my mentioning the goats and the lamb, lambs. Some he's going to weed to the right, the lambs. Others, the goats, are going to be weeded to the left. And to those, he's going to say, get away from me. I never knew you. Wow. He, he, he Do is. you want to be that person? I don't. I don't either. I want to be the person that hears, well, well done, done, good and faithful servant. Amen. And, you know, I, that's just me. And I think a lot of Christians are out there who do believe that. Mm -hmm. But they've been drawn in by the world and don't realize that they may be among those who get weeded, shuffled to the left. Ooh. And God yeah. says, get away from me. I never knew you. If you even have an inkling of a could I be, Mm -hmm. That means repent. Absolutely. It means repent. Absolutely. You know, uh, too many people, you know, uh, too many people, you know, and there's another scripture in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not afraid of God, but the fear of, the yes. Bible says the fear of God is the beginning yeah. of wisdom. Yes. That just Amen. starts you moving in the Amen. right direction. But when you're moving in the right direction, you don't fear God. You're, 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 uh, 
you're in awe of God. Yeah, good and, description. And the yeah. fear is that is to be separated from God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The fear is like the closer I am to Him, Amen. the safer I am. Yeah. And the further I am from Him, the more in danger I have become. Amen. Amen. That's the fear of the Lord. And and going back <laughs> to the beginning, the the discussion of man shaming. You know, some of you may be in relationships that, um, you know, the, the, the man isn't necessarily at fault, but he's the one that is blamed. Mm -hmm. Understand, it's not you. Yeah. It's not you. Yeah. The, the, they, <clears throat> there's, because you see all these movies, and even Christian movies, mm -hmm. that highly they highly feed into feelings mm -hmm. they highly feel feed into performance right emotions okay? emotions yeah emotions and performance mm -hmm. and so you i've watched it and been like oh wow that dude's tight you know he's yeah. he's doing good you know and and he's playing a role of of a great you know a a great man of god but ultimately even a person playing a lesser role, mm -hmm. when you love them, and you love them with agape love, mm -hmm. they don't have to be all that. It right. doesn't take all that. I'll use it as, as an example, and I love this movie, uh, a couple of movies, Fire, Fireproof and Courageous. Mm -hmm. Fireproof more than any, more is in line with what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. um, my prayer is, those things happen that's in the movie mm -hmm. that God repairs a marriage mm -hmm. and they get back together but there's also a thing called free will mm -hmm. and sometimes that other person isn't how do I want to say this they uh, they it, aren't on the same page Maybe the best way to phrase and never that. were and and never were. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were at one time, but they drifted mm -hmm. and don't think that they're at fault. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you're at fault just yeah. because they went astray yeah. and they possibly filed for divorce or they separated. There's just it's just like um, and people who are naive. I mean, if somebody says. Well, I've never walked away from the Lord, you know. We uh, all have at some oh, point. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, even if Not, you want to pull that off, yeah. let me let me just tell you, some people have, yeah. and they've they've returned yeah. because everybody goes through these processes. We've all went through patches where, you know, life is rough, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you lose your faith, but you ask some tough questions of God. Mm -hmm. And and maybe maybe for a period, a day or two, you did lose your faith. Mm -hmm. But then you realize, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Even questioning your faith isn't a loss. Of no, faith. it's not. And that's the very place at which. In fact, you, God, and I think wants you to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like um, to to have questions, to have skepticism, to have struggles. If we really analyze. The Word of God. It isn't a bunch of people who jump from mm -hmm. mountaintop to mountaintop. Mm -hmm. Oh no! You know, it's they go uh, through e valleys. Even Elijah <clears throat> being in the cave, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah. Uh, and God examined him and says, "What are you doing here?" You know, Elijah. And he's like, "Take my life, kill me." You know. Wait a minute. You're you're not seeing things right. You're mm -hmm. running from your mission. You're running from your purpose. You're even running from God. Yeah. And and God came after him yeah. and pursued him. God only allows us, I call it a tunnel vision, and that's all he allows us to see. He sees everything. Well, I don't think he allows us to only have tunnel vision. We do that. That's, that's our condition. Yeah. He would love for us to see the big picture, but quite frankly, we just don't get it. Well, we don't <laughs> get it, but I don't think, I, I don't think, I really don't think he allows us to see it because it would be overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. It is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. They have that. Um, they have that. It, it would be like 
He sees all of eternity simultaneously. Absolutely. Simultaneously. That's, that's exactly what I mean. He can handle that. I can't. Yes. So if, if you look down and you saw all your loved ones and stuff, and you could see the exact dates that they were going to get in car accidents mm -hmm. or the exact date someone was going to yep. have a... Uh, uh, athletic injury and break yep. their arm. Yep. Then you saw the date that relatives were going to die. You know, mm -hmm. you saw the days that people were going to betray you. Yeah. You saw that you couldn't stand it. You'd just yeah. be like, ah! Or you, know? you saw the day that you were going to uh, get divorced. The day mm -hmm. you were going to get married. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it's almost like, no, we're not supposed to uh, live in history because. If, if you live in history, you repeat history. Absolutely. That, that was the, the theme but of But don't forget it. Mm -hmm. Don't learn from it. Yes. There's this saying in carpentry, measure twice, cut once. Mm. In other words, uh, I think I need to cut this wood, get the measurement. Okay, 12 inches. Is it 12 inches? Cut, measure it again. Now you make the cut. So when you look at history, that's what you do. Mm. You, you remember it happened. You know it happened. But you go back again to get a measurement of, of learning, mm -hmm. a measurement of education, a, a measurement to apply to not do that again. Then you make a cut, which is a, 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 a transformation, a transformational intention, transformational action. You don't do it again. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you don't do it quite as, you know, quite as bad. You mm -hmm. know, it's a matter of improvement. But um, so if we... And it's like people, uh, like the defeated part of it is to to look in a rearview mirror. You know, you're driving down a road, and you look in the rearview mirror instead of looking out the windshield. And in the rearview mirror of a defeated life are only the memories, uh, only the the low lights. You know, mm. and then it gets you walking through yeah. this trudgery. Man, I'm here to tell you that. God doesn't want us looking in the rear. Matter of fact, rip the rear view mirror off. You know, I don't know if that's even legal, but rip it off. Yeah. You know, I'd say keep the side view mirrors so you don't go into somebody's blind spot. But God wants us moving forward into our destiny. Fresh start. Yeah, he wants us to examine what we did. You know, get something out of it. Don't If you went through it, don't go through it for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Get something, get, Learn the, from it. get the lesson out of it. And then make make another make the shot for destiny. Make the shot for Amen. destination. But you know, I, I've met so many brothers that I really want to say, don't because this is the heavy hitters of the satanic attack, mm. and it fell into the human condition in the garden: shame, blame, and mm. fear. Anything and anyone, or even any event that causes you to feel and live out of a sense of shame out of a sense of blame mm. or out of a sense of fear mm. that doesn't come from God because ultimately in the providence of God God's will is done and if if it's a failed marriage if it's a failed relationship and you did all you could do you see, see what I'm saying grace gives you liberty to yeah. not be perfect love right. covers over a multitude right. of sins Reject that and rebuke that in the name of the Lord Jesus and refuse to receive that. Amen. And if you have received it, uh, I, I would urge you and encourage you to stand up and boldly declare, you know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what you, what the enemy sent for my evil, God will use for good. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, Mark, and I'm almost done here because we've been going 30 minutes. You got to put the clothes in the dryer. <laughs> we're in the same spot. We're just doing a, we're doing a double camera. Multi-camera. Multi-cam. It's funny you mentioned that quote because um, that's it's something I just posted on my personal Facebook page actually just uh, earlier today. Oh. Satan loves to take what's beautiful and ruin it. God loves to take what's ruined and make it beautiful. Amen. Amen. And, and here's the thing. People want to know, what's my purpose? What I'm supposed to be doing on earth? And I've found... Worshiping God. Amen. Worshiping God. But if you want to know your area of expertise is most often the area of your greatest wounding. That's true. You know, Very true. The area you find that, um, that dev the devil has attacked you most 
is the very ground where you can be most mm. effective, Amen. most brutal, most like you. That's you know, other things are not personal, you know, and you know what I'm saying. But when it's personal, mm. when the enemy Amen. hits you there, that's the very place you want to hit the mm. enemy back, you know. Amen. And those people, like Paul said, uh, those people who've been wounded all over in every area of life. Mm. Yeah. They got a ministry. That's that's yeah. that's a widespread yeah. ministry. Amen. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, yes. Hey, I want to get before we end. I want to give a shout out to our friend in New Jersey, Tito Tito Santiago. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm we gonna, miss you, brother. We miss you, man. We got to do a live feed. We'll get Reverend Watson in too. We'll have to coach him though, because uh, if see, he won't stay to the end of this video. Reverend Watson won't. I told him last night we were going to get him saved, though. <laughs> I told him last night we are going to be praying for, pray for Amen. Reverend Watson that we were going to get him saved. <laughs> well, you talk about being ornery. But, uh, yeah, Tito, if man, we miss you. We're going to do a live feed here pretty soon. We're going to get it together. So, anyway, brother, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut this recording down. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you for this time to conversate, Lord. We thank you that your word says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Father God, we thank you that we can break the shackles uh, of the enemy. We, You have set us free. Whom the Son sets free will be free Amen. indeed, O God. Amen. So Lord, we know that there are those men who li who have lived in bondage of shame, blame, and fear that came from, not from you, but from the origin of the enemy. There's men who've lived in defeat because they've lived identified by something or someone that went wrong, an event that went sideways in life, but they haven't let go of it and they haven't quit. They haven't stopped defining themselves in accordance with what that was. Lord, I pray that by the power of your spirit, by the anointing of your holy word, you will make true that message that says, your word says, whom the Son sets free will be free indeed, that they will boldly and with the authority of the Holy Spirit say, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn around and use for good. I'm going to make this very place where the enemy wounded me a place of regret <laughs> that, that I was ever attacked there for the glory of God. I'm going to touch the lives of other people. I'm going to minister to youth. I'm going to minister to adults. And I'm going to break, break the, I'm going to pray that you help and empower me, O Lord, to, to do as your word says that uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the mm -hmm. poor, to proclaim uh, freedom for prisoners and to recovery of sight to the blind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to restore the lame and the favorable year of the Lord and to set captives free and that we would do that work because Lord, you said, um, as the father has sent me, you, you, you blew your breath on your disciples after mm -hmm. you had been raised and said, as the father has sent me, so I send you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a purpose to be on this earth and not just, not just taking up space, not just taking up place and definitely not to be defined by the past, but to be defined by our destiny. Amen. Help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Peace and love. Amen.